Uh, yeah, uh, welcome to uh, to I see more using machine learning in the first steps of generating 3D models from 2D images, our capstone project. And with us, I mean me, Bernd Ackermann, and my colleague Dieter Janssen. Um, and um, <clears throat> Uh, we have, as Ike has already introduced, uh, worked with a Google data set. And uh, one of the main challenges, first off, was understanding uh, the actual task at hand, because it involved lots of mathematics outside of our own uh, scope of academic knowledge. And we had to read a lot first on that. So I'm going to introduce you a little bit to the challenge and especially uh, what you can do with those 3D models. Um, Dita is going to introduce you to the data situation we had to work with and uh, the model that uh, we have applied in this use case. And I'm going to show you the final product and I'm hoping to see you in a breakout room later to demonstrate it firsthand. So first off to the cha challenge and uh, to a more serious note, as you can see in our background images, uh, this is an image of uh, the Cathedral of Notre Dame. And uh, you might remember the tragic event of uh, 2019 when um, a construction accident and the Cathedral of Notre Dame uh, led to the destruction of the main tower of the cathedral, as well as several valuable uh, religious artifacts uh, within the cathedral. Now, uh, the plans for the reconstruction of this cathedral were incomplete or absent entirely. And uh, this made the reconstruction extremely difficult. Um, as a stroke of luck, though, just uh, a few years before, the late Professor Andrew J. Tellen uh, managed to prepare a 3D reconstruction, uh, structural reconstruction uh, of the Cathedral of Notre Dame by using a laser scanning technology uh, down to a scope of, I think it was uh, five millimeters accuracy. So a highly accurate model, which uh, absolutely helped in, or helps currently in the reconstruction work uh, of the cathedral. Now, uh, one drawback of such uh, models is you can't always have uh, an architecture or modeling professor at hand who uh, conveniently models uh, every landmark of yours. And uh, since there's quite a lot of landmarks uh, strewn around the planet and we are living in troubling times, uh, any kind of lost landmark might only be remembered in photos. And uh, this is where we would like to jump in. So uh, I'm introducing structure from motion technology here. It's not nothing new, but the way we uh, would like to use it is. Uh, so um, structure from motion is a reconstruction of 3D models from images. And this usually requires some highly calibrated cameras. So uh, for example, a video of a high definition camera, several follow-up images. And by calculating the relative positions and rotations of each image towards each other image, uh, you're able to calculate the relative positions of each of the points within the image in three-dimensional space. Uh, structure for motion from uncalibrated image sources would help in monument conservation though, uh, because as already mentioned, you can't always have uh, an expert at hand, but uh, what you can have is uh, your Instagram photo album or your Facebook library or whatever tourist photos you can come up with for any kind of monument. And uh, this is where unstruck, uh, uncalibrated structure from motion would be extremely helpful. So uh, the basis for uncalibrated structure from motion at the heart of our project is uh, the image matching algorithm. Image matching more or less is the finding of common features uh, within two images or within image pairs uh, to uh, calculate a, a so-called fundamental matrix, a three by three mathematical uh, construct um, uh, used as a metric to uh, to to um, uh, used as a metric to estimate the relative position and rotation of two cameras uh, respective to their perspectives. Um, just roughly because we don't have the time to go in depth into the mathematics, but uh, the fundamental matrix is usually calculated using at least eight pairs of points uh, in two images and comparing their relative positions in the images as well as in three dimensional space. And uh, using this fundamental matrix calculated from those eight points uh, or more uh, can then be combined with the camera's focal lengths and principal point offsets. So intrinsic values hardware metrics of the camera themselves, 
uh, which allow us to estimate relative camera positions and rotations, and from here on out, go into three-dimensional reconstruction. Okay, now I'm going to show you the data we used to uh, get this fundamental matrices and the challenges we faced um, during this. So um, we had provided by Google five, uh, over 5,600 images, which were distributed unevenly over uh, 16 scenes. So we had uh, Brun uh, got from went from Brunborg Gate over to Torrey Fountain, and we had as low as 10 images to up to 900 images in the case of Notre Dame. And the images also came in various pixel sizes and aspect ratios. Where we had most pictures in around 1,000 to 800 pixels, uh, but also some very small uh, images in 200 by 200 pixel size. Um, here we have an overview over where we can see one image of each scene. Um, what we can immediately see, immediately see is that every image here has a slightly different shape, um, aspect ratio, and also the pixel sizes are different. And also we can see that sometimes there's a person in the picture, sometimes there's this, the view is a bit obstructed, like there's a bush or something. And we even had some pictures with Instagram filters, etc. So all of this will make image matching uh, very challenging. Furthermore, as we want to uh, match image pairs, uh, all images were matched with each other of with the images of the same scene. This resulted then in over 1,400,000 image pairs from just 5,600 uh, images. Furthermore, in the data set, we had uh, a covisibility score applied for each um, image pair, which was between one and zero. But one means it's a perfect match, and zero means there's no uh, similarity at all. As an example, here we can see a good covisibility of 0 0.7 for the Brandenburg Gate, or you can see it just with a slight different in, uh, difference in angle, while uh, with a bad covisibility of 0 0.007, or you can see a selfie of a man with another man in the background and a small part of the Brandenburg Gate further in the back, which almost doesn't match to the Brandenburg Gate on the left side. Furthermore, in the data set, we had camera calibration data, which in the real life situation would not be there, but still we use this um, data we had there to, with some fancy math, actually calculate the position of each image relative to each other. And we got a plot like this for each arrow here uh, marks um, uh, yeah, basically a camera and the direction it's facing. And in this case here, this temple in Japan, I actually went to this temple a few years ago on the trip and I recognized, oh, this really looks like the shape of the temple. So we did an overlay with some satellite data and we could see that actually uh, just using the camera calibration data, we could get a true to scale um, rep representation of the images taken. And we could do this also for, for example, here Buckingham Palace, where you can see that all the images were taken in front of the palace on the plaza. But we didn't want to do uh, just fancy plots, we wanted to do, do uh, modeling. So um, we tried first some simple machine learning models like support vector regression. But because our target, the fundamental matrix, is a three times three matrix with nine values, it's hard to predict something in this shape. So um, what we ended up using was LOFTA, uh, which is short for Local Feature Matching with Transformers, which was published last year by Sun et al. So it's relatively new. And it's uh, built up like this. So we have a convolutional neural network as the basis which extracts uh, feature maps of the images to reduce uh, dimensions and therefore computation costs. Then we have a cost level uh, local feature transform module, which gives Lofta its name, which uh, finds the similarities uh, on, in the pictures based on the own and the surrounding of the um, image partner. Uh, this information is then given to a matching module, with, which actually finds the matches and also assigns them a confidence value from zero to one. And then these matches are given to a cost to find uh, module, which uh, transforms everything to the right resolution and uh, outputs then the uh, right coordinates as uh, of the matched points of, in both images. And one could either, like here, uh, do a plot where we can see all the image pairs connected by a line, or uh, could use these points then uh, to calculate the fundamental matrix. If you would do image matching by hand, like we had already showed, it could in this case uh, with two images of Notre Dame look like this, where you can see, oh, these towers here look similar. 
We have um, the window in the middle, which looks similar, and also the gate here looks similar. But if we put the same image pair into Lofta, we get a result like this. So Lofta found actually over 3,900 um, common features in these two images, and we can nicely see how the persons in front of uh, the Notre Dame church are not matched. Um, based on our training data, this here had an accuracy of 60%. But after some optimization of Lofta, we could increase the accuracy to around 90%, which means there's a positional error of below 20 centimeter and rotational error of uh, below two degrees. So coming to the final product, uh, or what we could deliver within the limited time scope of our capstone project. Uh, we've managed to uh, produce an interactive data visualization dashboard allowing you to uh, explore the data set that we've just introduced uh, as well as uh, select images to uh, run them through our lofter calculator and visualize those uh, image matches as you've seen before and uh, we even implemented uh, an upload functionality allowing you to uh, upload your own images and try it out for yourself so get your cameras out um, as a future work, uh, we would love to uh, actually uh, follow the example of some of the uh, higher ranking competition uh, entries uh, of the image matching challenge where we got the data set from and uh, use Lofter in an ensemble with uh, several other methods to uh, further improve its uh, performance. And uh, we would also like to actually use this uh, algorithm then in a program like, for example, Visual SFM or a similar algorithm to uh, calculate uh, genuine 3D structures and um, see whether we can improve the performance of, for example, Visual SFM uh, with our algorithms. I think uh, Dita mentioned the last update for Visual SFM was something around seven years ago. So there might be room for improvement. Um, all those efforts would contribute into actually using less data, maybe less perform, uh, less necessary performance uh, to improve monument conservation efforts with just a few uh, tourist photos. So with those concluding words, I would like to thank everyone for listening us in the first ta talk and uh, feel free to contact us via email or on LinkedIn. And a special thanks to Raphael for helping us a little bit with the initial mathematics and uh, finding the uh, technical uh, applications for the for the um, directional graphs we've been using. Feel free to join us later uh, in the breakout rooms to see a demonstration of our dashboard. Thank you very much.